All right, today we're doing Unit 8, Lesson 6, Histograms. I can use a histogram to get the information about distribution of data and explain what it means in real-world situations. I can recognize when a histogram is an appropriate graphical display of the data. So um, for our warm-up today, we're looking at dog show. So here is a dot plot that shows the weights in pounds of 40 dogs. So I have to, uh, I have to know that there are 40 dots there. So I'm going to keep that information in my mind. So write two statistical questions that can be answered using the dot plot. So statistical questions have, um, have uh, ask multiple people and um, have a variety of answers. So um, write two statistical questions that can be answered with the dot plot. So what are the weights of 40 dogs in pounds at the dog show? I should probably capitalize that. All right, and then another question might be, um, so that can be answered using the dot plot. What is a what is the center of the data of the weights of dogs at the dog show? All right. So then, what would you consider a typical weight for a dog at this show? Explain your reasoning. So again, I know that there are 40 of, of these dogs, so I'm going to count till I get to 20 dots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm going to guess around 100 pounds. So what is the typical dog weight for a dog in this show? About 100 pounds. because that is the center of the data. Okay, so that's the midway point. All right, so I've got 20 dots before and 20 dots after, so I know it's about 100 pounds. So then, how many dogs weigh at least 100 pounds? So I'm using this histogram, and a histogram is different from a bar a bar graph because it shows intervals or ranges. So it says each bar includes the left-ended value but not the right-ended value. For example, the first bar includes dogs that weigh 60 and 68 pounds but not 80 pounds. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, how many dogs weigh at least 100 pounds? So, oopsie. So I need to use the first two bars of information because I don't use the third one because I don't, it says that um, you don't use the right-ended value and 100 would be to the right. So this is six and this is, it looks like 11 halfway. So six plus 11 is 17. So how many dogs weigh at least 100 pounds? I would say 17 dogs. How many dogs weigh exactly 70 pounds? Well, I'm not sure because it's a histogram. I really can't tell. Um, I know that six dogs, so six dogs weigh less than 80 pounds. But I don't know how many weigh exactly 70 pounds because a histogram can't really give me that information. Okay, how many dogs weigh at least 120 pounds? 
So I'm going to switch colors. At least 120 pounds and less than 160 pounds. So I'm looking at these dogs right here. So that's going to be... What, four and three? So seven dogs. All right, so now I'm gonna look at the next one. How much does the heaviest dog at the show weigh? Well, I'm not really sure again because it doesn't give me exact numbers. I know it has to weigh less than 180 pounds. So it has to weigh less than 180 pounds but more than 160 pounds. Because it would fall right here. So I know it's got to weigh uh, more than 160, but it's going to weigh less than 180. What would you consider the typical weight for a dog at this show? Explain your reasoning. So if I'm looking at it, the majority of dogs weigh between 100 and 120 pounds. So if I was going to come up with a weight, I would say more than 100 and less than 120 um it is the highest Ooh, I didn't spell highest right. It is the highest bar. Okay, so it has to weigh more than 100 and less than 120 because it's the, high, it's, um, the highest bar. So then, how are the histogram and dot plot alike? How are they different? Okay, so on slide two, we looked at a dot plot. So I'm going to flip back to slide two. Okay, it also shows that the most dots are between 100 and 120. It also shows the same range of dogs, but it doesn't give exact measurements. So if I was going back here, I would say, how are they alike? They're alike because the most, the, they're alike. The, because the most dots are around 100 pounds and that is the highest bar. They're different because they're are no exact weights on the histogram. Um, so that kind of that that's how they're alike and different. You could have also told me things about um, the spread looks smaller on a histogram than it does on a dot plot. You could tell me that um, the dot plot makes the weights look like there's greater spread or there's more details on a dot plot than there are on a histogram. There are a lot of things that are different. All right, so now they want us to drag and drop. So they want us to match the histograms A through E to plots one through five so they match. So I know that five to almost 10 is going to be six units for A. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I think this one goes here. So we're going to put that one there for right now. So I'm only looking at that first bar. So that's three and then one. So I think this one's gonna go here. So then this one's, there aren't any that are less than five. So between five and 10, that's three. So I think this one's gonna go here. And then 
Okay, it has one on, whoopsie, it has one on 20. So that one's gonna go there. And then it has just past 30. So it's gonna go there. So when you look at it, um, a lot of times you don't have to look very far in the histogram. You just need to look at the first couple of bars. That's how I made my decisions was based on where that first dot was. And then I could have counted. But if you look at the histograms and you look at the dots, you can see that the bars increase in the same general places. Um, it's just not as wide. So then here's a histogram that summarizes the length in feet of a group of adult female sharks. Select all the statements that are true according to the histogram. So it says a total of nine sharks were measured. Well, I know that I have, this is one, oopsie, keep doing that. So I know this is one, this is one. Then they said four sharks were that tall, that weight, 10 sharks. So that can't be true. A total of 50 sharks were measured. Well, let's check. 10, that looks like 9, 10, 4, 1. So 10, 20, 30, 40, yep, 50 sharks. So the longest shark that was measured was 10. The longest shark measured was 10 feet long. That doesn't make sense because the longest is going to be less than 17.5. So that's out. Most sharks were measured were over 16 feet. Well, that's only 15 out of the 50. So I would disagree with that too. Two sharks that were measured were less than 14 feet. Well, that is true. Two were. So B and E are the ones you should have circled. So then for IXL today, you're interpreting histograms. So we're doing more with histograms. Take a screenshot for me and then do your cool down for lesson six, export, and um, as a PDF. Uh, let me know if you need help.